I'm here with Kriparian, and uh, as a uh, fellow Canadian, how do you feel about Hot Form getting through? Well, I was hoping uh, at least one Canadian would get through. Uh, going into the tournament, um, you know, we had uh, 16 players total. We had four players from each of the regions. I liked the balance. You know, I like to see players from all over the world compete against each other. It, it kind of makes it a little bit different because usually when you have an organized tournament, it's largely localized. So you have a lot of players from one area competing against each other. And in, in the World Championship, it just, it just feels like the diversity is an aspect that you, you want to see as a viewer. And uh, I think that experience is one that, you know, we, we, we will hopefully do a good job in delivering. And so far, uh, Hot Form has done justice to bring that balance, and uh, maybe Purple can do the same. But still, at least we have one player from each of the regions, and in the end, we might have the full distribution, 25% from each region. Yeah, that would be amazing if, if Purple is able to pull through here. We'll have America's representatives, uh, China, SEA, and of course, Europe. Um, I don't know, though. Ping Ping Ho looks pretty tough. What do you think about this matchup? Yeah, Ping Ping Ho, uh, it, was definitely my favorite player uh, just from the opening games. Uh, I was so surprised about his, uh, really his charisma and his, um, really his experimental side, uh, bringing in some very weird things that didn't really seem like they actually hurt him. Uh, his mid-range shaman pulled some amazing wins. Uh, his hunter deck, which had a few very different techs, actually seemed like it was stronger than some of the other hunters that other players brought to the tournament. So, um, you know, I, I, I have his stake in it for that. Uh, but uh, you know, Purple's a fellow Canadian, so uh, he's got he's got some points in, on the board as well. Um, it's it's tough to say how it's going to work out. Uh, I think it's going to be an excellent match to conclude our series. Yes, I cannot wait to watch, and you guys don't have to wait any longer either. It's coming up next. a moment for people to come together. We are thrilled that you are here. Hello, BlizzCon. This community is everything. Two men enter, only one can go to the main event at BlizzCon. It's time to find out who will be our eighth player to go to next weekend's main event. Ping Ping Ho from Taiwan versus Purple from Canada. One person featuring the Shaman, one featuring the Rogue. I am Frodam, joined by Amaz and Robert Wang to bring you guys the last match of the day of opening week. It's finally time to call it the beginning of the end, boys. How does it feel to be here? Uh, this is the match I'm actually most excited for, the Shaman God versus Purple, uh, one of my good friends. It's going to be amazing. Um, the last match was kind of crazy, too. That was intense. Uh, where, you know, Hotfarm nearly scraped out that win, and yeah, congratulations go to him. And of course, Purple will be looking to join his fellow Canadian um, in the top eight. Yep. But I wouldn't mind a Shaman God being top eight either. No, I would not. Uh, Robert, you've been watching closely. We were watching the entire series, uh, you know, every single rope burn to their intense plays. What was your opinion on that? Uh, I thought Nilia has played really well up to this point. Obviously, you know, he's a very methodical player, likes to kind of take his time and figure out what he wanted to do. Um, glad Hot Form uh, advanced, though. It's really just nice for me for North America and by proxy USA to get on the board, even though it was in sure. fact Canada. That's right. Who, uh, who did the heavy lifting for us and. Uh, I really want to see Pipping Ho kind of uh, prove that his first series against Purple wasn't a fluke, that he really does understand this Shaman thing through and through. I'm mm -hmm. uh, very excited for Purple. 
uh, it's a chance to prove that, you know, okay, he knows Bloodlust is there in that Shaman deck. He's ready for it this time. It's not going to catch him off guard yeah. and do 31 damage, though. The, the element of surprise is gone. Both these guys have played. It's been the theme of today. Every single match, all four, have been rematches from the group stages earlier on. So with full information, how do these players equip themselves for the upcoming series? Remember, it's elimination match. Win or go home. Pimping Ho comes in here as a player who is going to be bringing the, sh uh, the Shaman to the lineup, but ultimately Drew is going to be starting off. Purple going to start things with his Freeze Mage, and and that already favors our player from Taiwan. Yeah, uh, we already see Purple keeping two cards, Acolyte Pain and Loop Hoarder. It's th that's the start you want. You just want to cycle more cards. Ping Ping Ho, on the other hand, we have Keeper of the Grove, one of the key cards to silence off the Doomsayer and perhaps even silence off the Frozen Minion for surprise damage. Absolutely. And you have to keep in mind that there's so much more riding to this than just being able to advance to the top eight. It, you know, the fact that you get to be on that main stage in front of that awesome set that we'll be on next week. There's also, you know, the storylines behind these players. Ping Ping Ho and Purple both have been living in shadows of other players on their teams. You look at Ping Ping Ho, for example, uh, you know, he, there's another player that's been the surprise of the year called Roger. And, um, you know, Roger's been a really dominant in a lot of the points and a lot of the tournaments. And Peeping Ho had a couple of splashes, but you ultimately forgot. Versus Purple had the same exact feeling behind players like Firebat or even Amaz uh, back when he was on Archon, taking the spotlight more often than, uh, than Purple was able to get it. But this is his time to shine. So you can definitely see that there's a lot on the line here. Yeah, Peeping Ho we saw kind of in the Legendary Series tournaments uh, before was really the first player to really popularize the, the Tempo Mage deck that had Flame Waker, used a lot of those low mana spells, and. Uh, he called it the Machine Gun Mage at the time, and, and we were all hmm. uh, very surprised to see that, and very it was very exciting to see. But as you said, he kind of fell off the radar a little bit. Uh, I think another storyline here for Purple, uh, I've spoken to him at length over the course this past week, and, you know, obviously he wants to win, he wants to go to BlizzCon, but for Purple, there's kind of this uh, this whole respect of self, he really wants to be a perfect player, and when he misplays or feels yeah. he misplays, he really beats himself up about it. And uh, For Purple, I think almost more important than winning is feeling like to him that he actually played this matchup correctly and that he does not misplay. Yeah, sometimes playing correctly uh, and letting the cards go out of the way, like win or lose, you just want to do your best, right? And that's exactly the kind of player purple is. Yeah, especially in this type of matchup where everyone's watching and it's, it is your key, it's your highlight reel for how you got to the round of eight. Uh, this is going to be really important. Now, again, in the very beginning stages as the Druid, you generally want to be able to ramp up early even having Darnassus Aspirin or Wild Growth or having something to do. But in this stage, Ping Ping Ho ended up passing, which gives Purple the slight initiative of being able to do stuff on the board. Loot Hoarder doesn't go uh, mm. answered. It can chip into the armor. These kinds of small little advantages really will help the Freeze Mage gain back some of that lost advantage in this matchup. Mm -hmm. And Shade is actually a very important play here. Uh, if you don't play Shade now, you might actually wait oh, no. till turn six to be able to play it since you have Shredder and Druid and Claw, mm -hmm. which means that it's very vulnerable to Blizzard. This is really the only time frame hmm. that it actually works out. We, uh, we kind of talked about in the last time Purple played Freeze Mage against Pipping Home that his mat, the draws he actually got were not super conducive to his agenda. He wasn't really getting into those cycle cards early. Sure. He was getting a lot of the late game stuff that he wanted to close the game out with. In this uh, game right here, we see a completely different situation. Mm -hmm. He's got two Arcan Intellects. He has the Acolyte of Pain, has a Loot Hoarder, and these are going to be really useful for helping him get to where he wants to go later on while allowing him to survive the early game, which uh, not necessarily too traumatic from the Druid. The Druid tends to kill you more in like the mid range and late game, but it's about building your arsenal of tools. Uh, we to see Archmage and Tinnitus in hand, as well as the coin. So I think this game so sure. far is already way better off uh, for Purple than it was the first time around. Yeah, I would say that Purple's hand is spectacular, but hey, Ping Ping Ho on the other side has a very spectacular hand as well. He has Dr. Broom. Uh, after playing all his uh, minions, he has Ancient of Lord to cycle for more cards, or you can even keep it for healing hmm. uh, if Purple decides to go a little bit more aggressive with Alexstrasza and then burning him out. Yeah, there's a, obviously looking at uh, Ping Ping Ho's curve, Eric, four, five, and then two sevens. Maybe he finds that Emperor Thoris and just has the perfect uh, turn order there. But he's actually going to opt to swipe here. Just get that Acolyte off the board. Make sure that Purple can't ping it every turn to draw up to three cards. So uh, values not letting Purple get those cards. Oh, attack the Shade. That is interesting considering that Shade usually wants to stay lying in wait because after a certain point, it can do a lot of damage that gets outside the range of Frostbolt and potentially Fireball. I think Ping Ping Ho is anticipating, like, well, I don't want my opponent to freeze the board and then have the Shade do nothing, so I'm just going to attack now. Right. And the, um, well, just the Doomsday on an empty boy for purple. I love that. Actually, if it heads up play, looking at Ping Ping Ho, what is his response to this? Uh, just to <laughs> either hero yeah. power pass or just play a Shredder for a two drop just for some semblance of a board. 
Yeah, both have merits. You build up your armor a little bit as Druid, um, but as a Shredder, you do have a minion that potentially could do damage. Mm -hmm. Maybe even completely mess up the plans of uh, of the mage. Like anything from, um, you know, Patient Assassin to Lord Walker Cho. We've right. seen like crazy stuff come out of these Shredders <laughs> that can really mess up with the game plan. Oh, or you can get your own Doomsayer and the mage can play <laughs> yeah, the minions. right, that's right. I really like this play too because uh, hmm. understanding that, you know, Pimping Ho's on turn five, so he probably had something like a Druid of the Claw in hand. Sure. Uh, he goes into turn six with most of the time for Druid, not a huge Haymaker turn. It's usually Thorsan or something like Force of Nature in hand, which obviously oh, Force of Nature oh, no. you want to save to close out the game. Sure. So he's really disrupting what Pimpingho wants to do as far as building an early board. And Pimpingho is going to go for that Shredder play that you brought up and see what he gets. It's a, it's a power play because even on five, in the best case scenario, he had Innervate. He had seven mana. This disrupts everything. I really oh, like this uh, sequencing that Purple chose to go for. He also made interesting choices too, like Acolyte on turn three as opposed to Arcane Intellect when he had two of them. Mm -hmm. And now, I mean, it doesn't really matter how the events ended up transpiring, but he does have a lot of good card draw. And he's drawing into some of the better options to remove bigger threats, which you'll definitely need coming into some of these turns. And not only that, Purple is sitting at 25 health, and usually True. that doesn't happen against the Druid at turn 6. So I'd say Purple uh, handled this situation pretty, pretty well so far. The uh, Haunted Creeper off the Shredder is kind of a big deal. Obviously, the 1-1s one that drop off of Haunted Creeper are by themselves not super threatening. But if there's a world where the Haunted Creeper body is disposed of and the two 1-1 one -one Spectral Spiders are sitting there, they can be activators for Savage Roar, which can turn into a lot of damage uh, suddenly on the fly for Purple to deal with. But uh, currently, you have uh, Pippin has six mana. A little bit awkward. Uh, Drill the Claw means that you can't hear a power or you can play it kind of weaker board. Yes. Um, depends uh, what he wants to achieve here. He, th he thinks that maybe board pressure is a little bit more important Wait, here. So goes ahead and plays the Drill the Claw. And this is the power of messing with the curve. Pippin Ho missed a hero power, in which that one damage could be the relevance or the point between living and dying. Mm -hmm. Fireball off the top allows him to remove and ping very efficiently. How important is the coin in this matchup compared to other matchups where you generally want to maximize that coin usage and timing? Usually the coin doesn't matter too much because against the Druid, you really want board, right? Mm -hmm. You want your minions to trade for their minions, you want your spells to trade for their spells. Sure. Hope for Alex Straza and go on with uh, with your life there. But the coin here with the Antonidas is going to be pretty huge, especially if Purple draws his uh, second Frostbolt so that he can activate the Ice Lance damage instead of just cycling for Fireball. We kind of look at uh, what Pimpingho wants to do here. Obviously, Dr. Boom is just the most straightforward, powerful play he has right. uh, as far as options go. Uh, he could play something like Lothep, which he just drew, but you usually want to save that for a more crucial turn to stop something like a, an Ice Block or a combination of spells from going down. Sure. And the Ancient of Lore represents drawing some cards, so looks Lothep, like he's going for the power play. Lothep is a little bit tricky because when you play on turn 8, your opponent can still Frost Nova for 8. Uh, if you play uh, when they have 7 mana, they actually have no response to it. Mm -hmm. uh, the other uh, dangerous fact of Lothep is that if you play on the Alexstrasza turn, it's basically a 5-5 that did nothing, right? Yeah. So uh, it, it's pretty tricky to use correctly. Yeah, it's one of those cards that uh, it feels like it stays in your hand for a while until you're ready to make that final push. <laughs> and then you want to make sure they're only doing one thing at most. Because yeah. Freeze Mage wants to live in a world where it can usually do two things per turn in those later stages. Like protect itself while hitting you with fireballs after Alex draws it. Yeah, it seems like that card is really one of the best counters to Freeze Mage. Yep. Or any uh, deck that tends to Do multiple things. Mm -hmm. yeah. Combo decks, right? Yep. Well, it might get a little tricky soon because we do have the full Force of Nature and Savage Roar combination attack in Pink Pinko's hand. Uh, and if these Boom Bots do end up sticking around and doing additional damage after the Death Rattle effects, that's a lot. I mean, Freeze Mage also just got confirmation that it's not going to be Ice Barrier that came off that scientist. It's Ice Block. And Purple sees that the Ancient of Lore does end up coming down. Not the most amount of pressure, but it's still pretty significant considering that he's going to be on nine mana next turn guaranteed. Explosive Sheep, so that, uh, that's super relevant, I don't think, here. Not as good right now. No. Uh, so Purple, obviously the combo is at the back of your mind when your true uh, opponent is at nine mana. So let's see if he decides to play around that a little bit. It is the ice block that is up, so... Uh, it would be 27 damage, I believe, if Druid played Force Nature Savage Roar and went all in and left the Boombot surviving. So Purple would barely be alive, and then he'd either choose to go super aggressive, like Alex Straza aggressively, or Alex Straza himself. It's kind of crazy to think that at 29 health, the mage is in danger of dying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Su such is the life of a freeze mage, at least in today's metagame. Mm -hmm. 
And PBK, even like the, the important oh, thing is he also has follow up damage from the hand and Lothab. So even if he got cornered by his opponent playing Alex Draws and saying he had the damage, he can also cancel out that turn and survive by playing Lothab and popping the ice block. So he has almost every tool he needs to finish this game. Just has to navigate correctly and make sure that he doesn't get, you know, terribly unlucky. Right. This, is, uh, this is one of the big weaknesses right here for Freeze Mage we're seeing. In the early game, Purple had a uh, Loot Hoarder, Mad Scientist, kind of these smaller minions that could jockey for control of the board early on. But as we've progressed, Freeze Mage really runs out of those mid-range minions. It, it has Antonidas, it has Alex Straza, but those are pretty much predicated on winning the game. You don't just play them down like a Druid plays down their minions. So now the Druid just pretty much had uncontested reign over the board. And yeah, as we've seen, we, we see the Savage Roar, we see the Force of Nature. The writing is kind of on the wall for Pimping Ho. Yeah, Pimping Ho decides to play the Adric along with the Hero Power to kind of hedge his bets. Uh, in case, uh, you know, lots of burn from Purple comes out. But uh, looking at this Flame Strike, it's... Um, it's decent. You can also ping off the ancient floor. Uh, no matter what the Goomba hits. Oh! oh! Okay, maybe that's if Pimping Ho gets an Innovate, that would be pretty disastrous for Purple because that is an extra damage on top of that. Amaz, what are you doing? Yikes, that <laughs> Innovate is the 15th point of damage. Oh man, that is not what Purple wants to see. And of course, Pimping Ho deciding if that's what he wants to do. I mean, that's like the perfect draw, right? If, uh, if the Hearthstone the RNG draw. gods give you a gift, you have to use it. Yeah, obviously you want to just make, make sure you're not rushing it, maybe not missing something. But yeah, okay. I would fully expect him to come to the conclusion like, you know what, I would like to set my opponent at one yeah. and pop the block. Here, here's the problem is if you don't set him to one and pop the ice block, what do you allow him to do? Like if Purple had a hand to go aggressive with Alex Straza and say he had like a second ice block, he might actually have damage to kill you. Um, but you do have that Ancient of Lore to fall back upon. So it's always these like weird, tricky scenarios where it's like you're not sure if you're if you want to take your time or you want to go all in. Then your opponent yeah. just like you play perfectly through their hands because there's two scenarios where you all in on damage and then you lose your ability to kill. Oh wow, he's not going for it. I'm very surprised mm. by this play because he's, he's too late to use combo. By oh, the way. oh, I see. I see. It's, <laughs> it's the rope. It's yeah. the rope from the meta game. But it took too long to think. Oh man, I'm not really a big fan of this because you want the mage player to be put on the defensive. And right. now Purple has an extra turn to develop whatever he wants. Oh my oh, goodness. That is That's a Thorson. super important draw right yeah. there. So on this turn, uh, I don't think you're looking to play Alex Straza just yet. Mm -hmm. Especially, you've already used, two, the thing is, you've already used two fireballs mm -hmm. defending yourself from damage on the board. So now it's probably just time to, which Purple's doing, start generating fireballs. Yep. Uh, that's four fireballs. Yeah, and he's gaining some big tempo by uh, freezing some minions. And so he says, you have to either deal with this Thorsen, and most likely you can't combo me down because I'm going to be at effectively 23 health. You would have to have two Savage Roars with the Force of Nature. Yeah, this is a... Uh, He's got uh, 20 damage, I believe. Tw uh, so 14 from the combo, uh, four from the aspirant. Uh, we two, have two from the two living from roots. the living roots, and one more from the innervate. Uh, so he can actually pop the block once You're again right. here. Uh, but no, no, he, that, that is 21, and then purple's at 23 because of the, oh, yeah, the yeah, ice yeah, barrier. Yeah, yeah. So he's right, he's actually right. okay. He's actually fine. He's yeah. not good. He's not okay against the second savage roar, but it's still unlikely. That's a mm -hmm. four card combo that you're not going to play around all the time. This puts purple in such a good position now. He's got yeah. all those fireballs. Yep. He can Alex draws the next turn if he wants to, or Emperor, whichever he thinks is better. Uh, it's just so many so many options for him now and. Pimping Ho suddenly, you know, he's at 30 health, but for how long? Right, might be regretting uh, not using his uh, his Force of Nature Savage Roar combo the previous turn to pop the Ice Block. And now Certainly. he will have to do something else. He has to use Force of Nature here, but he's using he's using both uh, Force of Nature and Lothab here, which means if Purple picks up Frost Nova, then it feels like this game um, would definitely start snowballing out of control. Oh no, I think uh, the Lothab turn, the perfect answer is Alex Chaza. Yeah, that's because, Amaz brought it up earlier. Yeah, exactly what you wanted to. So, uh, Pimping Ho's uh, timing oh, on the yeah. Lothab. He used was, both Ancient of Lords too. Yeah, yeah it was actually pretty bad. <laughs> well, maybe Purple's uh, Alex Chaza timing was a bit better. Let's just in, put this, it that way. in this case, it's, you know, you don't want, it's, it's like a, a, a rule by now. You don't want to Lothab when your opponent is going to be playing Alex Straza exactly. anyway. So that's why turn nine is generally taboo. But in this case, you're forcing Purple, who just got three fireballs, by the way, <laughs> after you use both Ancient of Lores. Right. It's it's very unlikely that uh, he doesn't have damage to kill you. Yeah, Pimping Ho's in a very bad spot here, too. He also used the Ancient of Lore to uh, draw cards. Right. So he's also missing the um, the other win condition of healing yourself out of range. Mm -hmm. 
So, and uh, he hasn't much armor because he's been uh, hero powering not very often. And that second heal bot, I, I really wonder how much is going to be the difference maker here. Well, he still cannot. Oh, uh, yeah, I guess he kept him fought to block here. Uh, but then he uses the BGH to clean up the Alexstrasza. Yeah, and Purple still doesn't have that second ice block. He has the scientist. So not quite it yet. So he's going to shoot his own scientist with the explosive sheep. Okay, that's very clever. And you yep. can also, meanwhile, fling a fireball. Oh, no! Purple probably got ice barrier. Did he get ice barrier? I mean, looking at that face, it, that's probably what he got. Uh, yeah, I guess this is the pretty awkward moment where you're like, wow, I set up all these plays, I had a chance. Oh. But Ice Barrier is not going to be it. Yeah. And Pink Ho is going to attack, realizing it is. And he's just going to oh. force of nature it down. Oh, what a ah. turn of events, man. Wow. Bippy Ho getting saved by the Mad Scientist, not pulling the correct secret. Mm. I'm so close to He almost pulled that off. And I feel like this is the second or third time we've seen over the course of the, this past weekend that uh, so close for the freeze mage floating out against the druid, and then the druid just ultimately has the force of nature of the savage roar, pops the block, the second block doesn't come out. Yeah. Some pretty unfortunate, unfortunate circumstances did happen for purple. Like, his opponent didn't have a wild growth or anything on turn two, mm -hmm. didn't have an answer to, like, a doomsayer, so that way he could be load the board. So there was small openings there, but that definitely left a bad taste in purple's mouth. He had to swing some water to wash it, wash it away. Yeah, at the end of the day, Druid does have a lot of pressure. I mean, four sixes and five fives, those are exactly the minions you want to um, play against a freeze mage. They have flame strike, which can't clear it uh, enough. They have to spend fireballs against it. Right. And um, at the end of the day, they have to react to your minions. Yeah. I think, so uh, I think Purple actually navigated that really well, though, mm -hmm. uh, all things considered. Obviously, as we've talked about, that's not necessarily a matchup that the mage wants to draw into initially. So and if he'd pulled that off, I think in terms of the series, that would have just been a ridiculous win Yeah. to get the Freeze Mage by the Druid. Yeah, I mean, there's still the Hunter and Shaman, which I think Freeze Mage is reasonable against. Although, Ping Ping Ho's playing, um, uh, is he's playing the hybrid or the mid-range Hunter, do you recall? He's playing that mid-range with the Fel Reavers. That's oh, right. yeah, the so, Fel Reavers. Oh, well, Fel Reaver against Freeze Mage is always uh, iffy because you're not sure if it ends up being the way, reason you win or the reason you fatigue and you actually have no other answer. Oh, I, I think Fel Reaver is insane against uh, Freeze Mage. Because, yeah, I mean, I've seen it backfire yeah. a lot, though. Oh, really? Yes. I mean, I kind of treat it as like a Mountain Giant, and that's exactly what you want to play against the Freeze Mage, a Mountain Giant. Well, the Mountain Giant isn't throwing away half of your deck for you. It, uh, the Freeze Mage can, has mm -hmm. enough low mana cards and spells where they can actually you know, get you to discard a fair bit of your deck. Yeah, on the uh, flip side of the coin, you don't have to life tap for the first two turns. You just play Knife Juggler or Animal Companion and lead true. up to the 8-8. Eight eight. So I'm actually a big fan of the... Uh, Fell Reaver from Pipping Hill. I, right. yeah, I would like to see this matchup. See how it goes. <laughs> well, we'll see if that ends up being the case. But for now, we're going to take a short break and check in with what Purple had to say about his friends and family. In the meantime, we're going to get ready for game number two. The most clueless person about video games in my family has got to be my father, who's also my biggest supporter. So he, he supports what I'm doing without having any idea. Of, yeah, he'll, he'll, he'll be wearing like one of my, my, my jerseys at home and watching the regional mug. Uh, that you guys gave me, uh, and he's showing it off his office, and, and no one else understands, but he's very proud. So there's good news and bad news for Purple's fans, primarily if his father's watching along. The bad news is he lost his first game, but the good news is that Ping Ping Ho is playing Shaman, so there's still a chance for him to just completely come back in the series, no matter how bad it looks. I've seen Shaman go through some good times and bad times. Uh, primarily bad, though, because it's it's been a rough meta game for Shaman to really come in here and make an impact. Yeah, but uh, judging by the uh, you know World Championships here, I I'd say that Shaman is doing pretty well, right? Maybe um, it has to be played at the highest level to realize its potential. I think it uh, also depends a lot on the matchup. But Shaman really good at taking the board, similar to Zoo. You get a lot of board clears; it could be difficult. Uh, you know, board clear. Some mage does well, but Pippin is actually going to bring out that uh, mid-range hunter. So we're we are going to get to see that matchup, yeah. boss. So going into this, you you believed the hunter has the edge here with Fell Reavers. Yeah, uh, I do think so. You have all the necessary tools to deal with your opponent's creatures. Mm -hmm. You have the bow for the acolyte. Uh, when your opponent freezes your minions, you have some charge minions. Uh, even animal companion is you know a lot of times charge. Sure. So um, I think Gapping Ping Ho is uh, at a very good spot here. Yeah, it's, it's reasonably powerful, especially because it's slower. Therefore, you can set up damage much. It, it, it exponentially curves out right. because the way that the aggressive hunter damages, it's very linear. It's like two damage, four damage, six damage next turn. 
Um, but then sometimes mid range goes from like you know three to nine to twenty one, and it's like whoa, what happened? Yeah, that is an exponential increase because they just keep on playing those minions. Uh, purple, uh, pretty glad to see only one one drop here. Yep. Just gonna ping it off and uh, you know save for another day. It's really good pacing because now he can answer the knife juggler card for card and stay at a reasonable health. And if he can just do this for a while, then maybe he can draw into ways to commandingly seize the board and even draw more cards from that. Yeah, I'm uh, a little bit surprised here to see the, uh, the knife juggler come out. I mean, I understand that you're not necessarily going to use it with the Houndmaster, mm -hmm. uh, but I was wondering if it's worth saving. Obviously, you get more pressure out of it, so maybe that's just what he's thinking. He just has to get that damage in now. Sure. I mean, uh, if he did play the uh, Mad Scientist, uh, Purple would have responded with an Acolyte. So it, it's like a different pathway, right? Uh, Ping Ping Ho realizes that maybe he has an equal point bow. Right. Maybe, you know, he could have cleared it. And now Purple plays a uh, Mad Scientist. There's just so many different paths that this game would have took, but this is what we're going with. That's right. And Purple draws the Mad Scientist, wants that to contest the Knife Juggler instead, so he can save Frostbolt for something like an Animal Companion or Huffer, which would come out and be in bigger danger if that was the case. Unlike last game, Purple really wants an Ice Bear here right now with the Mad Sciences, just to heal for that eight and um, get these Ice Blocks uh, later down the line when he actually needs them. All right, Bo will come out here to kill it off and we'll see what secret it is. Oh, no. that's the Ice wrong block. one. Yeah, Purple looks like he's not uh, not happy with his mad scientist today. They are not cooking up stuff in the lab that he's super excited about. Uh, not not the most. One thing to also consider is that Purple, um, how, I mean, the, the freeze mage is do, it does a great job sometimes against surviving, but it often gives up its way to win because there's just you just use up all your burn, you use up all your cards, and you have nothing left. In the case of Purple playing the Freeze Mage a couple series ago, that was the case. Like, he used up everything, and then he had just bared Antonius with nothing else and just died anyways. Yeah, in that sense, you really have to have some minion damage going to the face. For example, Alex Straza hitting them for 8 damage. Uh, maybe even Emperor Thorazar hitting them for 5 damage. Sure. Not a good spot you want to be, but uh, hey, the uh, first objective is to stay alive. Yes. Well, that's, that's the primary win condition here for Purple, is to stay alive uh, before sometimes you, your opponent can kill you. So, obviously here, you could play one, two drop, and then uh, Pepper in a hero power. Mm -hmm. uh, I kind of think I like just playing both minions now and trying to get uh, more minion pressure on the board as it long-term translates to what you hope is more damage. Yeah, uh, I like that too. Yeah. Um, if, if he can also coin Lotha for an even bigger board, but once again, the Lotha timing is so crucial. I love playing Lotha when my opponent has seven mana. That's like... Uh, what I think is the key term. They can't um, cross Nova. Uh, they can't really. They don't really have a lot of the seven drops. Right, so we see uh, purple here. Gonna just go ahead and put down the acolyte and peg. And obviously, with the minions on the board uh, currently represented, mm -hmm. uh, purple expects to get one, at least one. Obviously, one, uh, possibly even two more pings off of that, mm -hmm. uh, based on what happens with the haunted creeper. And the thing with Ice Bear is that it's not even a bad draw. It's like a healing touch, and that's exactly what you want against the hunter, anyways. Right, Leon okay. comes out. Kind of want to feel clear of the Acolyte now with the Haunted Creeper. Mm -hmm. And then just uh, put the Mad Scientist into the phase. That does make Haunted Creeper a little bit more vulnerable to setups for full clear. Right. But at the same time, I think you want to maximize every point of damage. You don't want to overkill the Acolyte. Or you can just ignore the Acolyte and just go face. I mean, I think that's a great play. <laughs> uh, if you're comfortable with him drawing potentially another card, but that also mm -hmm. means that he'd be wasting two mana to do that. That's true. So I think you're okay with that. Hey, the objective if Hearthstone is to reduce your opponent's health down to zero, right? Yes, that, that is the primary objective. I mean, I, I thought it was to have fun. Oh, <laughs> yeah, fun while hitting the face. Okay, sure, That's I think that's a that's a beat we can all I, do. I tend too. to have a lot of fun doing both, winning and hitting the face. Right. Okay. So Fireball to weaken the damage, and now he can draw a card. I, ho I hope Purple's having fun clearing the board. <laughs> He's doing it very <laughs> slow and methodical. Okay. I mean, oh, some people are, they, you know, therapy. It's very therapeutic to just clean sometimes. Okay, okay. Just to Ooh. scrub away Interesting. all the hunters and paladins one at a time with unstable ghouls and wild pyromancers. Uh, you know what's a difficult hunter minion to scrub away? It's a Venna High Main. Wow. And it's, uh, right that's the top a of the segue. Deck. Yeah, that's the, that's the segue. <laughs> not, I bad, not bad, Rob. Not <laughs> bad. I've been uh, hanging out with Dan Moore backstage. He's been <laughs> oh. teaching me the art of segues. <laughs> okay. Uh, we see... Yeah. Uh, yeah. Savan Jaime is a perfect card right now. But uh, once again, that Lothab on turn 7, very juicy. Guaranteed damage, you know? 
Carried your damage, but there also are options for purple. It's not like he's um, hurting for plays here. He's got the heal bot to immediately restore some of his health. That's true. And that's pretty significant because now he can spend his turn also pinging with the the hero power instead of for flame strike. Well, Purple's in our same position as us where he doesn't really know what trap this is, right? Do we even know what Pimping Ho's uh, trap setup is? We do know a freezing trap is in the deck. Okay. Well, if it's a freezing trap, it's actually really good for Purple because uh, this anti heal bot represents taunt as well, right? Uh, Pimping Ho has to clear it, otherwise, heal bot gets bounced back and he kills for another 8. But Pro's just gonna, you know, just freeze off the Lothab here just to prevent some damage. Yeah, so by playing Lothab last turn, uh, Okay. I think I would turn this is a little, a little awkward. Right? Yeah. Because I, I mean, obviously playing down Savannah Hymen is great. That is a Savannah Hymen on your board. That's exactly what you want. Mm -hmm. uh, you can't use that extra one mana though. So, mm. yeah. I would say it feels wasted, but it is a little bit problematic for him. Low Feb on turn seven. It's interesting because when Purple uses that Ice Lance, it's supposed to heal him for five versus Heal Bot heals him for two. So I can understand that um, by doing that he. He's more effective with his resource and life gain. Mm -hmm. However, now he doesn't actually have a way to stall that high main right, that comes down. Yeah, that's true. Maybe hopefully he can uh, use his anti bot uh -oh. to leverage something else in the future. Uh, right now I can see uh, anti bot plus Ice Barrier, which is yeah. quite effective. What well, is with that? Uh, what is with Pipping Ho's desire to now play Savannah high main? I'm, uh, uh, I'm well, curious. He wants the hero power every single turn from this point on. I think oh. his primary goal is to just whittle down very slowly and then you know, leap when the time is right to just kill his opponent. Mm. Like, wow. Right, now he's got two high mains. The high oh. mains are piling up at some point. This might be the turn where he plays it. An interesting play by Purple here, too. Uh, freezing uh, Pimping Ho's minions along with the heal bot. So if it is indeed a freezing trap, Pimping Ho might be a uh, little bit pressured to maybe spend a quick shot or perhaps even this kill command to right. kill the heal bot. But that takes his entire turn to do it. Yeah. it, it, it otherwise, he is limited to just hero powering and floating three mana. I mean, Unleash the Hounds doesn't get much value, so you could Whoa. argue, but he does kill command, and that's exactly what Purple's wanted. So not only is he gaining five life from the Ice Lands, he's gained, what, 10 from this heal bot? Yeah, very cool play. Keeps him off the high main, too. It's just, ugh. For Pimping Ho, that doesn't feel good. And I feel like if you were playing this game on ladder, you might just kind of weigh out the, uh, the possibilities of like, all right, well, he gets the heal bot. It's going to cost like seven mana. That's a lot of it's a lot of his turn. Maybe just play the high man anyway to ignore it. But mm. he's going to he's gonna not take chances here. Okay. It's still really tricky because there's so much board tension at the moment. And Purple has a very awkward hand that goes in different directions. One is board clear. One is draw cards. Uh, the other is finish the game, and, and he can't really afford to do all of them very effectively. Right. Because even if you flame strike, you're at least leaving two, maybe even up to six power on the board. What to do? Oh, but if you're super unlucky. Yeah, if you're super unlucky. But <laughs> okay. it's, it's like anywhere from two to six, which mm. could be a difference maker. Well, so that's why Purple is going to go for the safe play, yes. even keeping the flame strike for perhaps a bigger board. Yeah, I like getting Scientist out in case he picks up Explosive Sheep. We know that it is Freezing Trap based off the way Pink Pink Ho's played. Ooh, Fell River, uh, not on turn 5, is a little bit weaker. Uh, playing a yeah. Yeah, playing an AA at turn 9 is kind of fine. I mean, it's an Iron Bar Protector. It, it is. The only problem is that High Main's actually stickier and even maybe even better because... Um, you know, the whole point is that it's a beast, so you do get some beast synergies, mm -hmm. and also it has the death rattle, so it leaves be behind minions. It's also worth noting here that, uh, you know, two minions on the board for purple. This might be the best unleash Pimico is going to get. Oh. But that said, <laughs> I mean, it, it doesn't do, I mean, it still does the same as the hero power. That's right? true. Because you're yeah. not, you're not going to use it to trade anything. Mm -hmm. So I guess that, that unleash the hound just sticks in the hand for a while longer. We are going to finally see. Savannah High Main, uh, who's been ready to go since turn six. Mm -hmm. Now, I wonder if Purple picks up Frost Nova number two. That, that would put him in a pretty interesting position where he could try racing the Hunter. But I'm curious to see what he's going to be able to draw in the next turn. Oh, he gets a card here with uh, second heal bot, of course. Okay. That's in his deck. Right, and that's something we saw. Uh, Nias' Freeze Mage was running the one Pyroblast, and I, I think we determined that Purple has cut the Pyroblast in lieu of the second heal bot. Obviously preparing uh, for a lot of very aggressive decks, so mm -hmm. he's going to have a good amount of sustainability here. A little bit unlucky here that Purple drew his second copy of Ice Barrier, so that this Mad Scientist is only going to pull off the mm. second Ice Block if the first one gets prop, uh, popped. So Purple realizing that it's just going to clean away the trap. The Mad Scientist is not going to do anything this game. 
Yep, that uh, that does mean though that if something like Alex Strauss comes down later, he won't have to worry about uh, it bouncing back to the hand and just being dead. That's true. So, right, Archmage is yeah, uh, nice. like it might be the order of the he Archmage wants it Ice to Barrier. Add additional pressure. Yep. He says, "I'm just gonna try to gain effective life by doing this." and gain that fireball. Antonias won't be a win condition anymore. Ping Ping Ho will certainly want to deal with oh, it. Oh, the no. Hunter's Mark. Oh. That is the dagger. That is gruesome. If you zoom in really closely, that Clueless Ogre is actually purple right now. <laughs> and uh, he's got a little red arrow over his head there. But just activate the traps, probably put that Haunted Creeper in there. Yes. Now, do you drop the second high main because it's a uh, stick here, or do you just finally put down the Fell Reaver? Nah, you put the high main again, I guess. Yeah. If you're not playing the Fairy River now, you're not playing the Ooh, Oh, Purple's no. like, what? <sighs> but such is the life of uh, this matchup sometimes. The Hunter can be really dangerous with how it answers your uh, your threats. Double high main here, uh, assuming it comes down, is going to be just brutal to deal with. <laughs> uh, maybe a world where Pimico doesn't play either of those minions, though. That's Thinks true. Thinks he has enough damage on the board to pop the block. Then he realizes once he's there, he's got the hero power. Yeah, you know, save save a high for potential Doomsayer play. That might be the case. Sure, there is that possibility. Very small possibility. The Ping Ping Ho, yep. he holds back. Yep. And Alex Straza just comes into the hand. Oh, man. But so Purple doesn't have anywhere near enough damage, so. No. Yeah. He they did might use have to use to heal. Yeah, he did use a Fireball to clear off a minion, and, uh, you know, Frostbolt was used to clear off an early. Uh, two drops, so this is going to be difficult. What to do? Is it time for the what Doomsayer time? Do? <laughs> well, I think if he uh, antique heal bot and ice barriers, he's still safe from right. getting his ice block popped. But again, it might be the exact situation, but even worse next turn because yep. there's more power on the board. Or even the same exact situation is very terrible. So there's a there's a Doomsayer, but obviously if the Doomsayer goes down with nothing to protect it, it probably will just die. Exactly. Still gain, you know, a fair bit of health, off, probably like seven health off of the fact that, you know, it does die as opposed to you yep. taking that damage, but... Interestingly enough, I think just oh, Ice Barrier on. keeps him alive based off what the knowledge that we have. But mm -hmm. does Purple know that? Like, what if he has another weapon, another quick shot kill command, just to add that little bit of damage in? Yeah, 12 damage on the board and 14 with the hero power for Pimping Hill. Uh, Purple is going to decide to clear everything. And That's going to be a strategy. So now with 10 damage on board, uh, Purple is at 16. That's going to only be 12. No. 15. That's still not a nice block pop, I believe. I think it'll be a little short. That fireball um, helped Purple stay for an extra, alive yeah. for an extra turn. If he just ice barred and like shot a 1-1, one -one, you would have gotten popped. Yeah, so here's the situation where the Freeze Mage uh, strategy is going to switch to clear all your opponent's minions, Alex Strasser yourself, and then hit your opponent's face with that 8 8 a couple of times to win the game. <laughs> a much harder strategy than the normal one, though. Yeah. Now Purple's also in a situation where um, he needs Freeze, but he also needs to just not die. Oh boy. The second Santa High Man coming down really does not make that Flame Strike appealing anymore. Mm -hmm. Uh, because you're actually not, I mean, you're getting some power off the board, and you're kind of hoping that Shredder drops something, like, largely ineffectual, but uh, that's still six damage from the high main, and you have to ping me. it, more importantly, so that spends all your mana to do it. So we need Doomsayer. He's Frost Nova. Yeah, no, we need Doomsayer off the Shredder, I mean. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> oh, I suppose she came out a little bit late here. Not going to be able to be used, or maybe he, uh, Purple just plays it out. Okay, Explosive Sheep. I mean, it does help challenge the board a little bit. Kind of gets the first half of uh, Flame Strike out of the way there, so it just kills off almost everything. I think we're about to probably see Purple uh, Alex Straza himself on the next turn. Although again, it doesn't do anything to really address the board. Right. Uh, Explosive Sheep is going to do the heavy lifting there. What, what he's going to hope for is possibly like an, uh, another se a second Ice Block. So Flame Strike plus Ice Block may stabilize the board, and then he Alex Straza to the next turn. Right. But it's definitely looking very grim right now. Okay, Ice Block does activate, and will Ping Ping Ho kill off this Explosive Sheep? Doesn't want to take extra damage on the high main. Cobalt Geomancer boosts up the boosts kill up command the and quick shot, also. <laughs> One health. So, right now, Ping Ping Ho again weighing if he wants to spend time playing his minion, which could get frozen and quickly stalled, but at the same time, it's another minion that's powerful on board. And if he plays Alex Straza, it can potentially just end the game right right away. 
Yep. Uh, does Purple have any more copies of Frost Nova? Yes, he has one more in his deck. Okay. He also does have Ice Block. Ooh, but oh, Frost that Nova is, it is. That is the best card, but right now he thinks he's going to stay alive. But the Kobo Geomancer and the Savannah High Main means that the Kill Command is going to deal six. Yeah. Push Shot's going to deal four. He Ping Ping doesn't even need the, the uh, hero power to end yeah. the game. He's going to be pretty upset to see that all the burn. In fact, he's going through every single card in deck practically. He's burned nine. He says, wait, I didn't burn any. Oh! And he spells. Wow, even yeah. more damage. That's just brutal. Ping Ping Ho is going to go to a 2-0 lead over Purple, the reigning America champion, and see, put least, him on the brink of elimination. See, at least the Hound's come out too. He's like, ah, I didn't get to play this all game. Might as well. I can play it now. <laughs> And that is going to mean Ping Ping Ho just has to win one more game to represent the Asia Pacific region as its third member and keeping the Shaman Dreams alive. He's, he's, he looks a little nervous. His leg is popping up and down there. Oh man, I think he's actually feeling very confident. What better deck to be left with other than his famous Shaman deck? Right? He but has isn't that why you should be nervous? It's like, okay, what? I brought Shaman, and I mean, Ping Ping Ho is not. Uh, oblivious. He knows the state of Shaman in the current meta game. Oh. But he he still loves to bring Shaman. No. He got this. He's the Shaman God. He's like, I have three chances. I just need one, but I'll, I'll take three. You know why not? I was gonna say, if you bring the yeah, Shaman sure, deck, you can, you can try for it. <laughs> if you bring the Shaman deck, on some level, you're thinking to yourself, no. I don't care what people say about you, Shaman deck. You are really good. I believe in you. <laughs> That's right. He finds the the beauty right, right. in Shaman. It certainly is to the eye of the beholder. I'm, I'm really curious how it li ra uh, lines up against everything. I know Rogue, for example, is very strong against it. Freeze Mage tends to be good against it, although there is Doom Hammer in the deck. And then Druid is always this um, kind of weird thing where, like, it, it can be good, it can be bad. A lot depends on opening hands. But based off of even just math, like, say, for example, he's only 40% chance to win. That's still a very low percent chance overall for Purple to take this series. Yep. That's why going up 2-0 is a dominant position, especially in this kind of format. Well, let's start with the Rogue first for Purple. He will need to win all three games, and that's going to be pretty hard. Sami Chao is a beautiful opening for Pimping Ho, and, of course, uh, Tusko Totemic is what we now coined the Doctor 3. And that's a very it good uh, turn three play. You what? could play Manatai Totem. You also could play Tuskar Totemic <laughs> and get, and get Manatai Totem anyways. Exactly. I think Pipping Ho is actually, in his series against Purple, uh, like 100% on Tuskar Totemics dropping <laughs> Manatai Totem. No, actually, it summoned uh, the Taunt Totem. It never summoned the Vitality Totem, which I right. predicted. Right. So Crip was, uh, once, was correct once. I was correct once. Mm -hmm. So it's been a... So shall we predict it again? Uh, well, I'm, I'm sensing oh. a Totem Golem this game. Wow. Based off of it, the way its momentum's been piling up for our Shaman God, Ping Ping Ho, who starts off with a Zombie Chow. Rogue <laughs> is on the coin and SI. Uh, that is pretty powerful if Purple can try to seize the board here. But again, you know, having that extra card is, is great, but you just don't want to take too much pressure. I'm going to say Searing Totem. I want Purple to be a little I'm, bit lucky. Ooh. Oh no, if he oh, plays no. this, he can't play. <laughs> this is one of the problems with Totem Golem, right? right. I mean, having the Tuskar Totemic as yeah. like a follow up. There's a world where you would just love to play like turn two Tuskar or uh, Totem Golem, mm -hmm. turn three Tuskar Totemic, and you can't. Right. So I'm curious to see if he if he well, values playing the Totem Golem more. Yeah. Either Totem Golem is now or gets the next turn. So yeah. it's, it's, yeah. it's whichever one you Such prefer. Such confidence, Dan. Such, they're it's both Totem Golem. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna say, I'm gonna stick with Mana Tide Totem. Mm -hmm. I think Totem Golem yes. is just more. just the most powerful play. It is weak to backstab SI, and then you get challenged on board and you have the hero power. But I think the, you know, the risk is, is acceptable in this okay. situation. It's still very awkward. Okay. That's awkward. another turn three drop. But awkward decides. totem golem there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But probably decides to do a hero power here such that he can uh, combo oh, his SI later. Oh, wow. That's great perfect to draw. draw. Yeah. Although against Rogue, Haunted Creeper is not as Im impactful as you'd like it to be, unless you have Flame Tongue Totems um, or Defender of Argus, just because the stats really are weak to a lot of the 3 3s, and it does get cleared easily by Fan of Knives and the weapons and Hero Power. Mm. Sure. So it feels better probably than Hero Power. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it, it makes it so that, you know, if slash when he gets Flame Tongue Totem off the Tuskar Totemic, which is the second prediction, by and the way. And there you go, Fan of Knives comes into the hand. Uh, Purple does not have the full clear with the uh, Flurry, but yeah, he can he kill can the Totem Golem. He can take his time because of Zombie Chow. 
Mm -hmm. It's like he, he he still feels like he's working with 25 yeah, HP. This guy's and that's still reasonable because Shaman outside of the Doom Hammer and maybe Alakir still doesn't really threaten to kill from the teens. Mm -hmm. So as long as he's still floating reasonably high in health, uh, he, with Farseers in his deck, he's still in a pretty decent spot. Yeah, hey, unless Perping Hill decides to hex his own zombie child. Yeah, to but deal with the flame damage. token coming out, it's going to be really. No! Oh. Wow! <laughs> it's totally cool. I'm never right. I'm just I, never right. I don't know. I, I'm. How long will you question me, Robert? <laughs> That's my question. All right, what's the next one? What's, yeah, the, what's next the next one? one? I told you, Flame Tongue Totem. It's, to it's oh. Totem Golem and then Flame Tongue Totem. I'm saying Manatite Totem still. Okay, I'm, I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> no, you have to. Wrong. This isn't fun if you don't play a boss. All right, I'm going to still stick with my Searing Totem. Okay. Okay. Well, uh, Flurry and the weapon does clear. Is that the time to use Flurry? He has two in the hand. Can he also just get away with fan of knives. Oh, he is gonna do that. Okay. And oh wow, keeping the weapon so they can flurry next turn. Right, threaten. But which this uh, makes this it really good against what Pink Pinko has. Yeah, but this does surely punishes the heal uh healing totem punishes this play quite a bit. Uh Pink Pinko should summon a totem first. Did he bring some but oh, we'll some see. Totem. Yep. Oh, oh no. no. Never okay. never ever write about that. Oh but he gets the healing tone because you know, the taunt tone came out. That is true. Um, that's pretty unfortunate for purple. Oh, mm -hmm. although he does have uh, another fan of knives, so as time goes on, he's still gonna be able to use that. Fan of knives is just one of the best cards against Shaman. Mm -hmm. Almost anything that it kills with spell power can or anything it puts out it can kill with spell power. And now purple. however the fire elemental that that's gonna come down this turn is gonna be a bit of a problem for Purple to deal with. I mean, you can, yeah. You can sap it. That's Ooh. one of those things because it does, it it, it has immediate value again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and you're not necessarily, like, he could sap and then put down the Earthen Ring Farseer and yes. then <laughs> immediately lose the Earthen Ring Farseer, but obviously uh, not an ideal play. Yeah, yeah. Battlecry minions are, like, some of the hardest to deal with, and sap is not very effective against it. Oh, well, at least uh, Purple can answer this with a uh, fan and eviscerate. And keeping the backstab for later is actually very crucial along with the Azric. Yes. It now deals three damage for, well, practically no mana. And Shaman's running very low on cards and um, <laughs> ability to kill. Although he does have a Rock Biter sitting in hand, so I have to imagine that he's going to try to use that Rock Biter for double damage on a Wind Fury target. Mm -hmm. Rock Biter becomes a uh, Fireball when you get to target it that way. Yes. So now Purple, uh, with seven mana, has to think of some way to deal with this board. Drake, well, he knows his opponent's going to be uh, stuck on six mana next turn. Right. What can you use with that information? Um, fire you elemental number two. You just have to cross your fingers that he doesn't have fire elemental number two. <laughs> yeah. There and you if go. You, if you go for really, like, passive hmm. play, like, like uh, Pilot Shredder and Farce here, can he punish you and kill you? He can with Doomhammer and Rockbiter. Right. But the thing is, like, if uh, the Shaman has a Doomhammer and a Rockbiter, then you Probably not coming back in the game anyways, so Purple's yes. not going to plan for the worst situation. He's going to plan for a more realistic one. Hmm. And Rogue is supposed to, this is supposed to be the opposite. Rogue is supposed to turn the matchup at one point and then just completely make Shaman unable to secure any form of board. Mm -hmm. Instead, the opposite is true here. Well, yeah, uh, Purple's going to actually plan for the worst here. Snapping yeah. the uh, Haunted Creeper such that the Haunted Creeper and the Fire Elemental does not kill off the Azric. Yes. It's and actually a good ones. side effect too, because Rock Biter on the Creeper would have killed the Azric too. So now Ping Ping has to give up his Wolf if he wants to do it, or he can Hex and try to fight back. However, both those options leave some weird mana combinations remaining mm -hmm. for the rest of his turn, and both are not very desirable. If only he had access to eight mana. What to do? Hmm. Well, I mean, that's the price you pay when you summon <laughs> Magic Wolves. Oh, I see. Yeah, uh, this is, you brought up, uh, right in, I think this is very relevant here. Uh, the Shaman can have these really, really good, powerful starts, and yeah. because of the lack of card draw in a lot of the decks, uh, you usually see like, maybe like one Mana Tide Totem, you might see Azure Drakes, but there's not a lot of reliable card draw, so now he's very much just kind of living off the top of his deck, looking for something like Doomhammer Rockbiter or Alakir Rockbiter. <laughs> not bad. Getting a second Drake, really powerful. Again, it's the same situation where he's threatening spell power. And PPO picks up a very weak card. Nerubian Egg, while great in the early stages of the game to be activated, not very good in this situation without Defender of Argus. Yeah, turn 9 0 2 doesn't sound the best of minions. I mean, it turns into a 4 4, just give it time. Yeah. yeah it's, 
<laughs> yeah, sure. I mean, Gruul eventually will become a, a threat if you just play it too. But the right. problem is that it doesn't do anything this turn, which you need sure. immediately. Do you maybe consider here just uh, Rock Bidering? Uh, well, I was going to say Rock Bidering. Face and taking out the other Farsi here, but obviously he cares more about the, the fourth board. Yeah. You don't want Spell Power the on the spell right. board. It makes sense with the second Blade Flurry still as something you're yeah. considering. It's kind of weird how rogues are not really spell casters, but they benefit the most from spell power. Magic is weird, man. That's, that's all I got to say. Magic it's is exhausting, weird. too, for the Shaman. Yeah. Feeling like, yeah, out of all the classes in Hearthstone, Shaman understand what it's like to go to the gym oh. the most. A backstab, that's, that almost is a board clear, right? You just have to find backstab out what's on the other end. Backstab is a board clear because of oil. Well, we have to find out what's on the other end of the shredder. Oh, I mean, okay. <laughs> if it's a one health minion, that's really good. If it's Purple's a Dr. Boom. laughing very whimsically. I'm not sure oh. if it is. Oh! oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's awkward. Ah. He's no. willing to trade, though, because Shaman's out of cards, and yeah. he has Sprint and Shredder, so... Hey, if only there was a two-mana minion that has seven attack or more, he would have cleared. <laughs> Minna Foley. Yeah. Foley. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Yikes. Flame Dunk Totem off the top. Oh, no. That's not that's good. Uh, the Siri Totem well, is perfect for purple here. That's perfect clear. Oh, and that's that a is fight. the beginning of a comeback for Purple because he is going to be able to refill the hand and grab amazing board tempo. Ping Ping Ho has no other cards and he can't even utilize all his mana. Oh, this is this is just drawing dead at this point. He's not getting really at all. I mean, yes, he can clear oh. uh, some of the board. That's we'll see all what the, the shredder remains, but oh yeah, the shredder. Yeah, comes maybe if Lord Walker Joe came out. And then it's like, well, you can't sprint now, or you give me sprint. <laughs> Fantastic position for Purple. He gets an ability to also shut down uh, the totem very easily. Grabs the SI immediately. Yeah, and uh, yeah, getting some board now. And both Shamans are really, really bad when they are bad at, uh, out of cards. They do not run any uh, draw cards. Well, it just seems like the common theme in general with like some of these types of decks. Like you really do need, you can't be relying on your hero power to close out the game unless you're a hunter. And even then, it's still sometimes iffy. So outside of Hunter, like most classes need access to the, a lot of cards in order to, to close out the game. That's why we have Charged Hammer now to change the Shaman Hero Power, right? It does do that. Sure. I've actually run into Charged Hammer a couple of times. No joke. Makes sense. The okay. only exception to that also is Drax, is that Hero Power did. I, I'd be willing to ride that Hero Power all the way home any day of the week. Hero Power. Uh, what is the uh, other one in the Tavern Brawl where you play as Ragnaros and you have the... The yeah. hammer and it charges and oh, turns no. it to. I, uh, I guess the Ragnaros hero power isn't as bad, but you know we were talking about realistic scenarios here. Oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Game three is in the books. Purple climbs back ever so slowly, but this was to be expected. The fact that Pink Pink Ho even threatened that game right. is scary. That is scary. Anytime he c drew that Doom Hammer, I think Purple would have just lost the game on the spot. Uh, and because the draws didn't really line up for Pink Pink Ho. He had to just sacrifice his rock biter for board clear, and that's when you know that you know purple's gonna steal that game. For now, I mean, right now he still has most likely going to be freeze mage next. I mean, he, he's looking more desperate by the minute, but uh, <laughs> a moment of relief at least for now because purple's still in it. Mm -hmm. That would uh, be interesting to see. I would have to think purple's gonna go with the freeze mage next. Now you you absolutely know it has to be shaman you're playing against, and obviously purple's lost to it once, kind of uh, off the surprise factor and some subpar draws. Uh, I would expect him to go back to this. Uh, knowing that it is a better matchup, I want to say we actually kind of, uh, when we first initially predicted this matchup, we were saying, like, oh, you know, you just can't win this a Shaman. This is like a really impossible matchup. But Doomhammer, I was a little research after. And yes, Doomhammer does make this a, a far better matchup for uh, sure. the, the Shaman player. You're, you're threatening repetitive damage from another source that you can't just freeze all the time unless you have Water Elemental. So we'll see if that ends the case. Purple switches to Druid and says, you know what? Uh, I'm going to win with the Druid before the Shaman. And in Conquest, you can make an argument that it's somewhat inconsequential because you have to win with each deck anyways. Right. Might as well just get started. So this matchup used to be a lot well, worse done. for the Druid player, I feel like, back mm -hmm. in the day. Mm -hmm. uh, because they mm. don't really have a way to deal with super crowded boards of minions with more than one HP. Yeah. And Shaman just obviously just takes over the board early on. Uh, but for the Druid, this has gotten a little bit better, I feel like. Uh, with their Nasus Aspirant making them more consistent, allowing them to get to their bigger drops faster. Yep, but kind unfortunately, of. Ping Ping Ho has the hand to yeah, <laughs> answer correct, yeah, in insanely well. Uh, Ping Ping Ho could just like even coin a Totem Golem, for example. Uh, it, it is more preferable that way because you cannot Totem Golem into Tusk or Totemic. Uh, so, oh, he's just gonna go ahead and coin the egg instead. So the egg is threatening potentially the Darnassus Aspirant. Yeah. Purple doesn't have much of a choice. 
No, I mean, you definitely play the Aspirin here, right? Right. It's just, it's just right. And <laughs> it's just Ping correct. Ping, but here's here's a, the drawback of Piping Ho's play. He ends up floating a mana anyways. Right. So by playing um, the, the egg, he's trying to favor a 4-4 as opposed to a 3-4. Right. And that's marginally beneficial. But against a Shredder, it actually doesn't do anything. Pip Purple, wow. Purple doesn't do anything. That's that's really heads up. I have to say that's just. So he says, okay, you maybe wow. have totem golem, and you're gonna overload. I have to play Darnassus Asper now, and throw off his mana curve. Dude. Well, Ooh. at least the wild growth guarantees the ma uh, mana ramp, no matter what happens. Sure. And another thing about Ping Ho for maybe never been egging first, is that he does have the Valiant, the Thunderbolt Valiant, which does buff totems up. But uh, because Purple didn't play anything, he just goes ahead and sure. establishes the tempo here. So he wants to get that totem golem buffed uh, and a higher chance to survive. Makes sense. I like that line. So Purple does have Ancient of Wars uh, to drop as time goes on. Pimping Ho, though, has one of the best class responses to it in Hex, if he can draw it. Well, For now, though, let's summon another totem golem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. well, the Flame Tongue totem here would actually be so good. Yeah, Flame Tongue's actually really good. So but it's gonna be Mana Tide Totem. Oh! No, you didn't! Finally got one right, yep. But hey, not a bad follow-up from Pimping Ho here. He's gonna get a 4-4. Uh, even though he sacrificed his Totem Golem, his board is still looking really, really good. Well, it is vulnerable to a swipe. And that's exactly what Purple has. Swipe into some of the biggest threats that you'll see all game long. A 5-10! Twice! Twice over, and no totems have survived. But what it does allow Pimping Ho to do is to develop Thunderbluff Valiant um, just on curve. Mm -hmm. So that way he doesn't have to worry about timing it correctly because he's going to want to play Dr. Boom. Exactly. And the thing is, like, 6 health is so hard for Druids to deal with outside of, say, Force of Nature. And are you really that sad if you trade a Valiant for a Force of Nature? No, not really. It was, yeah. like, maybe a consideration that you maybe wanted to... Hear me no, out, it's crazy. No, don't oh, say it, Rob. Uh, <laughs> don't say it. All right. Well, okay, you want good. him to uproot the Ancient of War? No, you said I'm just, it. It's a lot of damage. Wow. It does a lot of damage. Mm. It does do, if, if he had Doomhammer, it does do 20 damage to the face if he ended up uprooting. <laughs> oh, man. Now, here's some value off the Valiant, buffing two creatures, giving wow. four extra attack. Um... And Purple will have to eliminate that, so he's going to spend at least two turns here, or two mana hero powering. Or, you know, he can use the Keeper of the Grove to ping if he wants to establish the Shredder. True. That might be a bit of a better play. We'll see what he draws. That might be better. Mm, Maybe you just play a second giant tree. The problem uh, is you leave the Thunderbluff Valley. Yeah. Up. Right. And if you leave it up, the game will run snowball. I mean, for anybody who doubts a lot of people who predicted this card to be good, just watch it live for a turn and a half or two turns, and oh. then you will re instantly see exactly what everyone was talking about. You're like, this card is crazy! Yeah, Purple does not want to see that happen, so it just right. goes off and kills it off. Now, interestingly enough, um, because he played the Totem Golem, he can't play Dr. Boom this turn. That was one of the drawbacks of Pimping Ho's line where he went to go for Thunder Bluff into uh, the Totem plays. Hey, and now if he plays Doomhammer, he still can't play Dr. Boom next turn. Yeah, that's right. So instead, he develops Shredder, which is still a reasonable minion, but when your opponent's playing Ancient of Wars what and uh, contesting the board with bigger mid-sized minions than your 1-1s, one -ones, you're losing everything that what makes Shaman powerful, which is leveraging your board in order to go for a, a late-game push. Yeah, like, just imagine if Ringho has a Flame Tongue Totem right now. Those uh, yeah. Spectral Spiders would just kill the Ancient of War immediately. But now Pimping Ho has to figure out something else. I like the fact these classes, they're, you know, they're battling for the board. You know, they're both kind of, I wouldn't say even on cards, they were for a second there. And then the Druid's like, oh, by the way, I'm going to draw two cards now. And the right. Shaman's like, what? How are you doing that? Why yeah. can't I do that? Interactive gameplay. Uh, it's very fun. Interactive. Very fun interactive. interactive. <laughs> Sludge Belcher is also really powerful, too, because most likely Hexel will certainly come out, but um, because the way Sludge Belcher is statted, it's, it conveniently trades into almost anything Shaman has very right. perfectly. I think Purple just goes ahead and plays the Asia War first anyways, just because he didn't see the Hex on the first one, right? Oh, okay. Off the Excuse top. me. Yeah, he knows, he knows. He's like, he's pointing. He's like, yeah. Excuse me, man. That, that but <laughs> you know what that does do? It stops the Dr. Boom. But it doesn't stop it next turn because it only has two overload. Yeah. Next turn, we'll finally play Dr. Boom. It's hey, happening. This is like the perfect situation for Ping Ping Ho. He drew exactly the card he needed. So now Purple is a little bit behind again. He's facing a 2-6 weapon along with a Shredder. 
Well, um, Sludge Belcher and Drake does give him minions to fight back. Yeah, and obviously Sludge Belcher does a great job contesting uh, Paladin Shredder. Yes. And also burns two durability off the Doomhammer. Mm -hmm. Flame Tongue Totem is not playable because of the overload. Man. <laughs> Well, Just I mean, shaman things. <laughs> I wouldn't be. Um, I wouldn't if be. He, if you could play Flame Tongue and Doctor Boom, how insane was this turn? It was ridiculous. I think playing Doctor Boom first and then playing the Flame Tongue is is also very good, right? Boom boss could get it's buffed true. up. It's true. Yeah. So I'm I, saying, you know, dream hey, this is a boss. really good hat already. I We're mean. in America. We live for the dream. Wow. Uh I like to dream reasonably here. Yeah. Oh. yeah. You have two cards. Let's not get greedy. Maybe we just play one this turn. Rob, don't tell me how to live my Hearthstone life. Uh, let we your dreams, <laughs> let your dreams be dreams, please. <laughs> Absolutely. Not. Purple's dream would be to draw a swipe here. Big game hunter would also be reasonable. Oh, Force of nature doesn't really not do the actually trick. super great. But what it could do is start setting up for potential lethal, because I mean his opponent's within a reasonable range. Sure. So, so if you can pile up damage over the next couple of turns, you might have a case for, okay. for pushing. You might even tr tr uh, play the Ancient of Lore to cycle for two chances of BGH, but now Purple's going to do the one and trust. Ooh. Emperor Thorson reduces Drew the Claw and Force of Nature down to nine. And then, that uh, doesn't really give you and much. That's still 10 damage. You could have Soft Taunt on it too. It probably just needs to get killed. Right, but the thing is, Flame Taunt Totem doesn't care about health. It just shreds through everything, right? Right. <laughs> My goodness. Uh, Purple's gonna do it the hard way. Just gonna probably. Oh, yeah. I oh, no. You know, fate, you know, using your own basic attack, Doctor Boom builds character. <laughs> Toughens you up. <laughs> yeah, it does. Yeah. It really, really, you know, just separates the boys from the men. It's true, but then you do get a scar in the face. Uh, a lot of people think scars. It's fine. Mm. Uh, you know, most people think it's possible. Oh! Oh, wow, is what, that lethal? That, that, that might be just lethal. I think that is. Because you can play the Flame Tongue, attack oh the minions goodness. first, and yeah. then play the ally. Oh, man. That oh. is it. Ping Ping Ho is going to win 3 1 wow. over the America's Champion Purple and close out this series. The exact cards he needed. With Shaman. There we go. Shaman God. Don't let your dreams be dreams. Don't oh. listen to this man on my far right. Well, he had 10 mana. He could afford to dream big there. It was a 10 mana dream big turn, and then. How much bigger does it get than Alakir and Flame Tongue Totem on the same turn? Oof. Way too much damage there. The story of the Shaman continues. A close-up of Doomhammer, one of the key ingredients of that victory. <laughs> okay. But he didn't even acknowledge it. That's cold, Ping Ping Ho. That's cold. At least, like, give an honorary bow or, like, some kind of, you know, little acknowledgement. That Doomhammer was really valuable to be able to gather that damage to end the game. It's important yeah. to remember the people who got you there. Like, Doomhammer was, was. a big part of that, and Pimpico was like, I don't have time now for anymore. That. I'm like, big time. I'm top, top eight. I'm top eight. Top eight of BlizzCon. You know, don't really need no Doomhammer. It's like, all right, come on, man. Wow. But uh, we'll, we'll be hearing from him in just a few seconds here. In the meantime, uh, we just want to take a second to acknowledge three players from the APAC region being able to go onto the round of eight, stopping uh, yet another American player, or sorry, America's player, uh, you know, as, as Pearl is from Canada. Any yeah. thoughts on that? Uh, one America's player made it through. I'm happy, but jokes aside, the APAC region performed really well. Uh, super impressed by them. And I think there wasn't really a clear expectation of what to expect from China and the Asia Pacific region. And obviously, they really showed their stuff in this uh, tournament thus far. And I'm That's excited right. to see what they do in the top eight. Yeah, it seems like the top eight might have all class all classes to be represented, right? With yeah, yeah. Uh, Shaman going through. So it's going to be a lot of stuff variety. It's going to be exciting. It's going to be fresh. So I'm looking forward to the top eight. That's right. Not one, but two shamans have gone through. And one of them is the shaman god himself. Peeping Ho is awaiting with Rachel for a winner's interview. Thanks so much, guys. I'm here with the shaman himself. And I have to ask you, Ping Ping Ho, because this was a rematch against Purple. What did you learn when you first played him that helped you win this time? Like the most important part is that I learned his entire free page. And I, I learned that he didn't have it many burn spell in his deck, and I can just um, adjust my strategy with that. Excellent play, and uh, it certainly turned out well for you here as you're standing in the top eight going into BlizzCon. And with your victory, Asia Pacific becomes the highest represented region in the top eight, and America's becomes the lowest represented region. What do you think about that? I think that's because APAC is good, I think. 
I think so too. I think you've proved it and the rest of your competitors. Now, when we come back, we have a lot more Hearthstone for you. But before we do that, I'm going to give it over to our casters and we'll close out the day. Eloquently put, Rachel and Monk. Thank you so much for that <laughs> enlightening interview. What are you laughing about, Amos? What are you giggling? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah we're, we're awesome. laughing because like Monk's supposed to be there translating for Ping Ping Ho, but Ping Ping Ho was born in America, and he, he does live Taiwan for the vast majority of his life for many years. Uh, so he does speak Mandarin primarily. It's just kind of amusing that Monk was there, but he didn't even need it. Sha <laughs> you know, he doesn't need it. He plays shaman, and he doesn't need an English translator. This no. guy is balling. I know, uh, very, very impressive. Obviously, as you said, he lived over here for a while. He even went to university, I believe, over in uh, America. So, yeah, very, very good English skills. And he said what needs to be said. Asia Pacific is good at Hearthstone. It's good at Hearthstone, and it's good for us because we have shamans, we have priests, we even have a rogue going through. Let's take a look at everything that has been going on this past week. We have finally settled down to eight players. We have Tice versus Kranich, battle between Europe and Korea. And in this top half finishing out, we have Oskok from Sweden versus Ping Ping Ho from Taiwan. Dai Meng uh, is going to be challenging Kano after uh, that series. And we will end with Zoro and Hotform. So top eight is stacked. Very excited to see what happens. Uh, excited to see if the Shaman Dream can stay alive. I really want to see the Shamanation continue. Oh, I'm going to root for the Priest for Tais. I want the Priest to win. Um, brother, that means that Blizzard might not make a lot of strong priest cards because uh -oh. they're like, oh, priest just won. Uh, remains to be seen, but hey, I just gotta refer the class that everybody thinks is bad. See, he remembers where he came from, yeah. right? The roots. Mm -hmm. Right. Ping Ping Ho. Gotta touch that Doom Hammer before you go. Uh, well, guys, we're about to wrap up here. Any last thoughts and words before we close opening week, Robert? Oh, uh, no, just been very exciting. It's been a pleasure to cast with you all. I've had a fun time. Uh, you know, obviously, when you get to this point for players, it's it's very emotional, it's very stressful, mm -hmm. and uh, I, you know, I'm excited to see what they brought, and more importantly, that they've all, as a group, been really nice to each other. They've been extremely friendly, and uh, going out of this, I think even if they didn't make it necessarily to the top eight, uh, they will have made some new friends, and it will continue to push them to get even better at Hearthstone. Yeah, that's right. They certainly met some new friends, uh, maybe even some new painters in their lives. Mm -hmm. Moss. <laughs> Yeah, I think uh, I want to give a shout out to all the players. Um, it is have been a very hard journey getting here. It has been eight months of laddering, eight months of gathering points uh, in like tournaments and such. And they shouldn't feel embarrassed. Uh, they should feel very proud of sure. their play um, getting this far. So um, yeah, big shout out to them. Top 12 in the world for some of these guys. Even though Life Coach Purple, etc., have been fallen today, we still have eight players remaining. It's been a pleasure casting opening week as the match has been fierce and the competition has been electric. Thank you to all the players for a great show. All of them deserve a hearty congratulations again for making it so far. Now to wrap it up and to send us off here to Anaheim, there's Rachel. Thank you, guys. It was an amazing final day here at opening week. I hope you join us next week at BlizzCon on November 6th and 7th with more exciting matchups. And in addition to our usual pro-level competitions, we are very excited to bring you an exhibition match between two of the top poker players in the world. The first is a seasoned gamer coming from StarCraft who goes by the ID Elki. And the second is the biggest live tournament winner of all time, Daniel Negreanu, who has recently earned his Golden Mage. These two physical card slingers will compete in a best of five show match. We also have a special BlizzCon edition of Challenge Stone featuring some of your favorite casters going head to head. That's it for today. Make sure you tune in for the World of Warcraft broadcast at 1.30 Pacific. And now we'll leave you with our Windows 10 game DVR highlights from today. And we'll see you all at BlizzCon. The 2015 World Championship Series Global